Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my painting, Cherry Tree at New Hope. We're on part six of six, and today I'm going to wrap it up. You know, I bring out the foreground at the end, and I'll be sharing some of my secrets and some of my own ideas for adding dimensions to an atmospheric work like this one. In part six, I begin to apply the whites using white acrylic ink, which is quite opaque, for the blossoms that will decorate this beautiful cherry tree. I enjoy using the white acrylic ink because it can be applied quite thick and opaque, or it can be softened with water and mixing with water, and it's entirely interchangeable with watercolor paint. It adds a whole new dimension to the surface and brings the foreground out, just like the black splatters that I continue to add. I hope you'll enjoy it and give it a like. I hope you learned something from this episode, and subscribe if you can. Now let's paint. Cherry Tree at New Hope, Part 6. This is where I finish. I'm doing some black splattering. I want to intensify the vividness of the painting. So I'm loading my brush up with wet lamp black paint, splattering and accenting. I spray it with my water bottle to diffuse the blackness. I don't want it hard, I just want it accented and dark. Blocking with a piece of paper to control where the spray goes. I can try touching the black paint into the spray dots and seeing if it will spread by itself. If it doesn't, I'll have to spray it again. To make the white side of the cherry tree stand out, I'm painting good strong darks next to it. With these accents, I am drawing the foreground very strongly into a more prominent position as I have continued to do throughout the later part of this painting. Here I'm using a little bit of permanent rose to add some warms to the areas where the blossoms are going to go. And now I've got my white ink back out and I've diluted it with a little bit of water and I am splattering 
around the branches to see if just this much will be enough to add the white blossoms I want to add. White and pink, I should say. And diffusing those white splatters with some water. So they will spread around and look natural and ethereal. I just like the black adds some good strong accents. The whites will add some good strong highlights. Using my brush more directly. You know, the reason I am putting the white ink on the paper or on the tape rather than in a well is because this is an acrylic product and if I accidentally forget and let it dry in the well, it's pretty hard to get back out again. I don't use it directly out of the bottle either because the bottle is more tall and narrow and I have knocked a bottle of white ink over more times than I care to say. So I find I have a lot of control just grabbing it off the side there. If it dries up on the tape, I don't really give a hoot. Now here I'm involved in making a judgment call on how much of the house to cover, how much of the gardens to cover, and how many white blossoms I want to put on. So far, I do not have enough, so I will be adding more. Now this pink I'm adding will color the blossoms in some spots to a lovely pale pink. By spraying these whites, they become more translucent and almost seem to float over the surface of the paper. And to my way of thinking, this adds a dimensionality to the painting. This painting was, after all, created in many layers. From the beginning blur to the more detailed Victorian house in the background and then building into the foreground. The darks both accent 
and add dimension. And now the whites are doing the same on the very top layer. Satisfied, and I'm calling it done. Cherry Tree at New Hope. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. I hope you enjoyed my beginning to end painting Cherry Tree at New Hope. I hope you'll give it a like and subscribe. And if you click on the bell, you'll get a notice whenever I release a new video. I appreciate your comments. There are links to the products I use below. And you could check them out too. I'll see you next video.